Welcome to the first installment of Everything I Played This Month, January Edition. I started off this month with a <clears throat> correct play of Paint the Roses. We found a fairly major rules error we had previously made, and we won this time. What starts as a pleasant jaunt through the garden quickly ramps to a tense lockstep chase with the Red Queen. Despite the Alice in Wonderland theme, the tension of the end game feels as if you have 10 seconds to defuse the bomb, and is the bomb spade red, or is the bomb spade spade? And that means nothing to you if you've never played the game, but you should give it a try. It's fun. I then played Campy Creatures, a blind bidding bluffing set collection game. Rarely does a game which you've never played feel so incredibly familiar. It doesn't reinvent the wheel, it doesn't bend the genre, but it is a lot of fun and a simple game with a pretty coat of paint on it. Next is Voices in My Head, a game that combines exciting mechanisms like hidden role, social deduction, dexterity, and area majority, yet somehow manages to remain boring. I respect the attempt, and I don't want to quash any future games from trying to be different, not that I have that kind of clout anyways, but for me, voices in my head just felt entirely underbaked. Following a game about the inner psyche fighting to do what's right or wrong, we have Plant. Ow, I bit my tongue. Inverdent, the newest game from Hit Collaboration, AEG, and flat out, you're drafting plants, items, rooms, and puzzling them all together to earn the most victory points. Your plants need verdancy, sunlight, and of course, color-coordinated wallpaper. If you've played Calico or Cascadia, you should know what you're getting into, and it's contending for my favorite of the three, though I still don't know what verdancy means, and at this point, I'm too afraid to ask. Rapid fire round! At this point, we're going to speed through all of the board game arena that I played this month in a single breath, and if it does end up looking like I'm reading from a script, it's because I'm going to, because I need to concentrate on breathing, or, or not breathing. I'd be shocked if you haven't already played this yet. Sometimes it's super fun, other times I can't seem to get my birds flapping fast enough to get off the ground. It looks like an Excel spreadsheet, which is one of the many reasons why I cannot understand why Kyle doesn't like this game. Super fun, don't like the looks to hurt you. Cowboy Rondell, or is it? I still don't understand how to play this game, but I'm having fun doing it. A true charmer. I'm not sure what it is about it, but the simplicity of its actions and the variability of each play make this game one I'm happy to be invited back to time and time again. Yeah, it's good. Talk about a game where each decision you make is incredibly meaningful. Drafting area control monsters and fighting with your friends are hard to beat. <sighs> While present Max catches his breath, I want to thank you all for being here. If you're enjoying the video, please leave a like and comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It takes 10 seconds, but it really does mean a lot to us. And if you're looking for additional ways to support the channel, check out the links in the description below for our Discord, our Patreon, and our official Table Knots merchandise. You okay? Where were we? Planet Unknown, a polyomino game featuring a variety of tracks to push cubes on, resources to collect, and more importantly, a Lazy Susan, which genuinely adds to the game and makes the drafting feel very unique. Forcing your opponents into suboptimal pieces, fighting over shared objectives, and having some control over when the game concludes gave me the meaningful interaction I so desperately crave. Then we played Crokinole. It's Crokinole! Capping off the night was Skate Summer. If Tony Hawk Pro Skater was a board game, this is what I imagine it might be like. First, you're trying to nail the best possible tricks by pushing your luck and laying down trick cards. Then you're skating around town, collecting letters that spell out skater, claiming resources before the others can, in a sort of area control aspect that reminds me of graffiti. I enjoyed the quicker game, and I question if I could have remained as invested if we played the longer game, though there is sort of a dissatisfaction when the game ends and no one has completed the entire line of skater. Whatever. Ska came before Tur. Draco, Remy, and Granger. Stop! Next up was Marvel Dice Throne. It's Dice Throne that's Marvel themed. Or, if you've never played Dice Throne, it's Battle Yahtzee with your favorite Marvel characters. A nice game when you just want something quick and easy, but not one I ever find myself itching to return to. A new entry this month is Four Humors. It may as well be called The Prisoner's Dilemma, The Board Game. That's oversimplifying it a bit, but the feeling remains. Can you trust your friends to win with you, or should you just try and secure it for yourself? Add some public objectives and fairly pretty art, and you get yourself Four Humors, a game I liked quite a bit more than I ever thought I would. Next was Cascadia, likely one of the better games to introduce to a non-board gamer, but one that I just do not get excited about anymore. I think it's an objectively good design, and I like the aesthetics and the variability, but I never reach for it unless someone else in particular asks to play. 
Then we played Cat in the Box. As someone who did not grow up playing Euchre or Bridge, trick-taking games have almost universally fallen flat for me. I don't particularly know why, they just do. But Cat in the Box is unique enough with its suitless cards, exploding paradoxes, swingy scoring, and area control elements that it really hits the right notes for me. Shame the box is far too small for a cat. Just kidding, that's a good thing, small boxes are dope. Following that, we pulled out So Clover. And I guess sometimes you just gotta be in the right mood with the right people, I don't know. A game that I claimed to be great but boring as far as party games go really proved me wrong this month. I had some of the most fun sitting around a table with Kyle and the Doolins as we tried to make connections to Lil Sebastian or Explosive Detergent and more. Sometimes I'm just wrong, and I'm not afraid to admit that. So Clover was a riot and one of my favorite plays of the month. Then I played Nemesis. It's alien the board game. It's random, it's brutal, it's long, overly fiddly, and despite not surviving even three quarters of the way through most of my plays of this, I somehow still come back excited to try again and see what sort of story unravels this time. After that, we played Acropolis. This is brilliant, but I like this. First running through Acropolis was enjoyable, but ultimately forgettable. Having revisited it several times since, it's a game I'm this close to adding to my collection, breaking the, if Doolin has it, I don't need it rule. The multiplicative scoring, the 3D building on top elements, the pace of play and ease of setup, it's just a blast. Next, we played Veiled Fate. Veiled Fate is a great game. I've played it many times and enjoyed it loads. This time, however, we were absolutely speeding through it at a breakneck pace and ultimately, it suffered because of it. Game still good, play not so good. But it was worth it because the reason for our scamper was a scheduled play of Blood on the Clock Tower. That's right, we did it again, folks. We got more Blood on the Clock Tower in person. This was particularly exciting because I was introducing it to Jash and Kyle who had either never played it or only played it online and it meant a lot to me that they enjoyed it, though not to the level that I do. We unfortunately only had time for one play and the evil team spun a pretty perfect web of misinformation. Despite the result, the game still felt close and that it was either team's game going into the final day. I hope to have more and even better plays of this in the future. After nearly two years of adding and removing this game from my cart, I found it at a friendly local game store and decided now was the time to get Imperial Spells and Steam. My friend Kyle over at Give Pause Hobby has been raving about this game and ultimately is the deciding factor that kicked my butt into gear and decided to get it. What masquerades itself as an anime train game may be more akin to an engine building race game. It was halfway through before I realized that I spent all this time building up an immense board presence and several specialists yet had nothing to show for it. Yet at the same time, Jash and Kinney were being much more efficient, stealing deliveries right out from under me. By the time I realized it was too late, what followed was one of my favorite feelings in board games. Run it back right now, I want to try again. But we moved on to Resurgence, a post-apocalyptic bag building worker placement game. I need some additional time to think about this experience, but although it didn't blow me away, I enjoyed it at the very least. Though there is an element of fighting over board spaces and blind bidding for power in the various regions, this game was missing the element of tension that I really love in other games. If someone took your spot, it wasn't much trouble to pay an additional resource to just go anyways. Don't get me wrong, it was still advantageous to block off other people and make them spend that extra resource, so maybe it's a good thing that it's not overly punishing, but the play left me wanting more. Huge positive though, the game seemed to move at a quick pace and I was very pleased with the amount of gameplay in the amount of time spent. And that's January. Thank you all for watching, and I encourage you to join our Discord if you are looking for a welcoming and inclusive group of gamers to chat with. And a huge thanks to all of our supporters in the Discord, in the comments below, and especially over at Patreon. If you enjoyed this format, please let me know down in the comments, and maybe we'll get a return to form in February. We'll see ya.